please approach the podium, state your name and your address. My name is Colleen McDonough. I live at 1631 Blue Drive. Um, Bridget McDonough is my sister. She was writing for my 91-year-old father, Jim McDonough, who lives in this neighborhood. And that was stated just to, to clarify that. Um, I'm speaking in opposition, but I'm speaking for the Alden Park Neighborhood Homeowners Association. And we oppose the rezoning, and we're talking about rezoning, because of the neighborhood. The neighborhood hasn't been discussed yet. It's a mixed use. We do have students, but we also have faculty that live in this neighborhood. We have retired faculty that live in this neighborhood. We have retirees um, of the city school systems. We have young professionals that like this neighborhood because it's a source of affordable homes. We have, um, you know, as I mentioned, my father, who's 91, lives in the neighborhood, as well as newborns, um, women stroller their children around, kids ride bikes still, not just when Mr. Barr was here. And so it's still very much a neighborhood that has stayed the same. And this development, it put through, is gonna change it. Because once our end goes in on this corner, right where those our pens are, it can whip down pine trees, and it can move north of the city. And anybody with deep pockets that can buy a property and then say, we have an RM right next store, you can't deny it to us. Um, we feel that there are conflicts with the standards governing the exercise of zoning power, and we all find those a few of them I'll talk about. One is that the suitability. We know there's going to be development. We, in the future, we acknowledge this to some of the LLC members that called, one of them that called us. We have a big problem with the high occupancy. Um, unlike the previous zoning that you looked at, we don't care about the kitchens. We care about the number of individuals per acre. And this is high occupancy. It is going to cause traffic. Bay Tree Road can only be get gotten to or from east-west. It cannot be by the north because of the one way of Oak Street, which necessitates cars going down Azalea Drive and Boone Drive to get to this complex. So it is going to cause an increase on the Zalian Drive. No doubt about it. We already have a lot of traffic trying to get to Bay Tree because of that one way in the um, Also, the scale. The scale was mentioned. The scale is unheard of on Bay Tree Road until you get to the mall. <coughs> there is no three-story building, residential or commercial. Um, the developers talked a lot about university building. There is no residential or commercial building that's three stories until you hit a hotel. And there's only two buildings that are two story on Bay Tree Drive. That leaves 97% of the fronts on Bay Tree Drive are single story structures. So the scale is amazing. Um, someone, one of them, a uh, person associated with this walked, tried to find comparable buildings in ba in Beth Austin with these sizes. And he came up with, it's going to be larger, longer than the post office. So two buildings, those long buildings, longer than the post office. And one of the scales was close to the Mathis Auditorium. So this, these are large buildings going into little tiny kind of smaller homes that are pens right now. So we're gonna lose our lose our privacy. People are not going to be able to rent their homes, the rental units right next door. And we hear that this isn't an economic issue for those income property owners. 
but yet it's an economic issue for the developers who have to make it three stories to make it work, to make the money work. So it is an economic issue. We're just talking about it at a different level. Um, also, the need. There's absolutely no need, no more student housing needs. There's vacancies in the student dorms. This is the first year I received an email. I'm a professor there. I received an email from housing asking if I knew any students and to announce it in the classroom. So there are vacant dorms. Um, we called property managers who for some reason are too afraid to speak tonight, but every property manager said, this is not the time to put this development in because we have vacancies throughout. We went and counted up the vacancies within a four block radius of campus. This is just <coughs> signs in front of apartment buildings. We don't even know how many apartments were available but there were over, there were 67 vacancies in that area. Um, talked about, I, you've heard about Becca School as being maybe why this should go in. Becca School has 230 students. They're expecting to have more students. These students walk daily from Becca School to the university. If we increase traffic and pedestrian traffic there, potentially there could be increased city liability. These are sixth graders through 12th graders. And the numbers at that school are only going to increase. Um, because of those numbers, parents pick their children up. We have <coughs> images of parents picking their children up so there is already congestion at the, this area. Um, so much so that cars have to pull off the roadways in order to let buses pass to take the ones going home by buses. So there's already congestion even without 180 more cars. And there's, you hear that statistic that's based on the national study that every car leaves its home on an average of three times daily. It's not just to go to commercial. It's to go to work, it's to go to church, it's to go for entertainment or recreational. There's lots of reasons to leave your home, and that three times daily is about an average. Um, there's no, if there's no need, then there's no need to affect the established residential zoning. Why should that be affected if there's no need for this for more rental um, Why should the Nichols House was demolished because there's no need for more student housing. Um, essentially, we do support some alternatives. On Bay Tree Road, it is a neighborhood activity center or zone that way for future. We support stores and cafes fairly close to campus. We would support fairly low density housing that redeveloped and reuse existing properties <coughs> instead of the equivalent to slashing and burning type of, of development where you take out what's there and build something new. I think this property uh, would, would be great for redevelopment where you're using the existing properties. Um, uh, I guess one thing, I just keep hearing university, university, university from the developers, but this is private. It's not university. It's not going to be controlled by you, the university is. It's private. And so I don't think there's a guarantee that all those 180 beds are going to be filled with students. And so there, there potentially are going to be non-students coming in just the same as there are non-students coming in to Black Congress. So, um, that's it. Thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? All right. If not, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak against this request? Thank you. 
cars were parked on top of us. And we all know it. But they do not tow cars away on time. And, so, and cars don't park on the stadium and they don't park on the uh, basis. Basically, the four lane highway. So that's something we can take out. I believe. Because I've lived there for 38 years. And you can ask when the question is there to see. She will tell you, she lives there in my place. Now, the only other thing I'd like to do is I was taught a long time ago that people will buy anything in love. They will, they will say anything on the telephone. They will, nowadays, to the modern, to the modern, <coughs> they will say anything in text messages. And that's it. You got to say, uh, anything else? Yeah. Please, uh, or email. But he always told me that it's very difficult for them to tell you things they really want to tell you when they face you face to face. That's a totally different situation. And we look at this and this and this and this. But right now, I would like to introduce you to these, these are the young men. Y'all please stand up. My cat. Y'all can stand up. These young men, these are the young men that live in the houses on Lake Street. They live there. And I think that you need to see their faces. These are the people that we're going to throw out if we read them. They're going to be thrown out of their houses and their houses be thrown out of their This should be your sons, grandsons, son-in-laws. And it, it has to be just a big of a negative effect that you possibly have on the ground off the middle of your home with the Alabama and all that other is bad things to say about us because we threw them out. This is the little part of the story. They need to have a good experience with all that. Mm. Thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? Yeah. On uh, Pine Creek, uh, are there any no parking signs there now? There used to be a no parking sign when you first turned in and came off of, of the Dunn and Curry. Right there, there was no parking sign. But somebody's going over right there. They said, no, it's parking. And the kids are going to find out. They are no parking signs on my street. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak against this request? I'm Shane Wood. I'm the president of the George Park Native Association. I live at 300 George Avenue. I'm not going to be quite as eloquent as Colleen and, and have the facts. She stated all the facts. Um, but you can believe what you want to, but there will be increased traffic in our neighborhood. There'll be increased litter. There'll be increased crime. There'll be increased noise. Um, you can't add this many people to a residential neighborhood and not have those. That being said, and, you know, this is a thing of numbers. I mean, people people look at numbers, and, I, and nobody really looks at this, but just look at this, who's out here in this audience. I'd be curious to know how many people are here in favor of this rezone. I'd like to know how many are here opposed of this rezone. And out of the ones that are opposed, actually live in those neighborhoods and are who taxpayers within the city of Iowa and Lance County. And I would appreciate your consideration in opposing this result. Any questions for the speaker? No, we appreciate your time. We have a few minutes left, so anybody else in the audience would like to speak against this application? Can you please state your name and your address.
but he's been living at the back of us since June 1950. We married the following January 6th of 51. It became my residence then. 64 years. My husband is a veteran. He purchased this home with the assistance of the GI Bill. The streets were dirt roads. When it rained, we had to park the car someplace else and walk to our house. We have had five children while living here. Two of them are now deceased. Our son, Charlie Weatherington, was an attorney here in Valdosta. He passed away very suddenly in August 2010. And this was barely two months since I had received two heart bypasses in Jacksonville, Florida. He stood here where I'm standing tonight, just weeks before he passed. And he would be here tonight if he was still living. We now have three daughters, nine grandchildren, four great grandsons. Of course, they are all great to Charles and me, and they enjoy coming to their house home. We have worked hard to maintain our home and yard. We do not need or do we want the apartment buildings in our neighborhood. If we literally destroy it, there are plenty of houses and apartments already over there that are either for rent or for sale. We have had some good neighbors over these 64 years, and of course there were a few that weren't so good. But please don't devalue our property even more by building these apartments. It will be most devastating to see these homes torn down and demolished. This will not be progress, but will be devastation. I understand that some of these builders or developers are from Texas. They find enough space in that wide open acreage to accommodate their proposed buildings. It will literally destroy our property. We don't need the additional crime or glaring lights in our bedroom windows. The huge increase in traffic, we will be fortunate to even be able to get out of our neighborhood. There will be an increase in just about everything that's unpleasant if this is approved. I beg you, please vote against it. Consider people that have lived over there all this time and have made that their home. And we've worked hard to maintain our home and our yard. I get out there and race now, and I'm almost 84 years old. My husband's 86. And we will please ask you to take this under consideration when you vote. We have lived there practically a lifetime, and I want to thank all of you that took the time to speak with me on the phone in the past few weeks. I really appreciate your taking time to listen to one white-haired senior citizen. Thank you, and may God bless all of you with my prayer. <laughs> I'll be brief. My name is Alfred Willis. I live at 4153 Stem Hall Boulevard, Hermitage, Tennessee. I am a, here as a consultant to the Alden Park Homeowners Association. They uh, engaged me to uh, conduct some research on the uh, uh, Nichols House in particular and the other houses that are affected by this proposal. Uh, their objective was to provide you and uh, other officials in Valdosta, other decision makers, with uh, as much information as I could gather in order for you to be able to make better decisions regarding the historic uh, significance of the Nichols House and the adjacent properties. Uh, I have uh, made my findings available to Emily Foster. Uh, through many emails on an ongoing basis. I had the opportunity to speak to her this afternoon uh, and assured her once again that I will continue uh, to share openly uh, with her uh, uh, anything I may discover in the future that would be uh, relevant. Uh, uh, I, would, I, would like you, I would like the record to show a couple of things. The Nichols House and other houses along Bay Tree uh, were uh, included, uh, were noted and included in the 2003 uh, uh, Lowndes County Historic Resources Survey uh, undertaken uh, through the state of Georgia. Um, and uh, they were identified at that time as being uh, of historic significance or of potential historic significance. Uh, and so uh, those findings have been a matter of public record 
uh, for more than 10 years now, and uh, all the property owners as well as decision makers have had uh, every uh, uh, possibility of informing themselves, uh, for example, prior to purchasing investment property in the area about, about that. Um, my own uh, findings, I, I have, I, I have uh, concluded uh, with regard to the Nichols House that it is a, uh, uh, eligible for the uh, National uh, Register of Historic Places as a, uh, as, a struck, as a building of at least statewide significance. I believe that it is conceivable that the uh, uh, house could uh, qualify as a structure of national significance and that is on the basis of the conversation I have had with a, uh, a, a historic preservation specialist in Mississippi who's very familiar with architecture in the southeast and we believe that it is an example of a uh, building type the binuclear house uh, that it, and it, it is very very possible that it is the best example uh, found uh, east of the Mississippi and south of the Mason-Dixon line. Uh, in any event, uh, I do not know how many structures in Valdosta are of statewide significance and therefore are entitled to your special consideration not only on behalf of the citizens of Valdosta and Lowndes County but also on behalf of the citizens of Georgia. Uh, I believe that there may be as few as three, including the Nichols House, the Crescent, which also may be of national significance, uh, West Hall at VSU, and then the third one is, uh, is the Nichols House. I have uh, really been all over town, and I mean um, southeast, northeast, northwest, southwest sectors, absolutely all over town uh, for the last two months when I've been working on this project, uh, looking for uh, uh, buildings of comparable significance and uh, besides the three I've just named, I cannot uh, find one. I, I do not believe that there is a, uh, any other uh, building of statewide significance uh, in Valdosta. Thank you uh, very much for allowing me to present on behalf of my clients. All right. Are there any questions for the speaker? <coughs> I did not we thank you. Staff, if you could, if you could take the, uh, the pictures down off the podium so that we can see the audience.